How to build a Blackgate Sweet Pea 5 inch gauge locomotive. Part 63. Enlarging the rear ring of the smoke box so that the boiler fits in it. Removing the crossheads to make better ones. These days when I make these videos I don't often use the biggest of my three lathes, which is an old Smart and Brown Model 1024. The chuck is large enough to support the work, as you see here, from the inside, but it's running anything but true, so I need to hold the smoke box by the outside, which means I need to change the chuck jaws. I need to replace these with some outside jaws, so I can grip the smoke box externally rather than internally. Fitting the outside jaws is a very simple job. It's a good idea to take the opportunity when the jaws are out of the chuck to give it a clean. I'm using some WD-40 and a cloth. It's a bit rusty ever since I sold this lathe to a friend of mine. He never used it, he just left it in a damp place. I bought it back off him because after selling it when I moved from the other property to here, I really missed it. I don't use it much in the videos because I appreciate that most viewers do not have lathes of this size in their workshops. It does make handling larger parts and turning cylinders much easier. It's very important when refitting the chuck jaws to make sure you get them in the right place. Each of the jaws has a number on it which needs to correspond with the numbers that are in the slots at the front of the chuck. Once you've fitted the chuck jaws it's a good idea to tighten the jaws and they should look like this. If they're not in this position, you've put them in the wrong way around. Now I can hold the smoke box in the chuck from the outside in instead of the inside out. When I rotate the chuck though, this particular smoke box is not as concentric as I would like. This locomotive is badly made and very slowly I am improving it. Every episode makes it a little less grim. This is a four jaw self-centering chuck. I could of course use a three jaw self-centering chuck, which would allow me a little bit of room for manoeuvre, but it wouldn't hold the smoke box quite as rigidly as it does with the four jaws. The last thing I want to happen is for this part to fall out of the chuck and become damaged. What I'm doing at the moment is just taking a very light test cut, just to see how out of round the ring itself is. I can see the outside edge of the smoke box is very much out of round. At this stage I've only removed a small amount of metal, but I want to see whether it pushes onto the front of the boiler. And here is the front of the boiler sat on the bench, and at the moment it's still nowhere near. The smoke box is far too tight. Don't forget that this boiler was never fitted to this engine, it was bought from another source. And that is a good thing, because even though the boiler has a bit of a leak, it's really well made, far better engineered than the locomotive. I'm going to try a DTI, or dial test indicator, which is no good at all for this job, for the simple reason that the smoke box is made from a rolled sheet of steel. And to start with, the diameter of the smoke box is not constant. A DTI is far too accurate for this job. I have a better idea. When in doubt, use a hammer. This also proved to be ineffective. Time for a health and safety caution. Don't do it like this with the lathe revolving, because it's dangerous and quite a stupid thing to do. I'm doing it so you don't have to. So please, under no circumstances, try this at home. For jobs like this, there is a fairly simple solution. Stop the lathe and rotate the chuck by hand and just see how far out the hole is by looking at the relationship between the boring bar and the part you're going to turn. Eventually I got somewhere near, so I turned the ring to size. In this clip, I'm using a folded pad of emery cloth just to remove the sharp edges. You need to be careful when you're doing this. Here I'm blowing away the swarf because I'm going to try it in position on the smoke box. First of all though, I'll show you the finish, which really is not too bad at all. And this is more than accurate enough for what I need the part to do. This is a before shot. If you have to hammer the smoke box onto the boiler, it's no good. Because of the expansion and contraction properties of copper versus steel, not forgetting the aluminium smoke box ring, it's important to leave a gap for this expansion to happen. 
I can easily fit a piece of wet or dry sandpaper all around the joint between the boiler and the smokebox ring. This gap also allows for the sealant that you're going to be using to keep the smokebox airtight. So here's the smokebox job so far. The smokebox ring's been turned to fit on the boiler. The chimney mounting is now the correct fit and nicely polished. So for the moment I'm moving away from this job onto the dreadfully made crossheads. I cannot live with these, so I'm going to make some new ones. They do not look right, they are mechanically not right, and the drilling of the hole positions, as I will show you very shortly, are diabolical. To remove the crosshead now the wheels are in position requires the cylinder end cover to be removed so you can slide out the piston and piston rod, complete with the offending crossheads. This is the first one. I'm going to leave this shot on screen for a while, just to give you the viewer an idea of how badly this is made. I don't ridicule the work of other people purposely, I'm just showing things as I see them. I cannot deal with workmanship this bad, it's just a personal thing. Just look at the hole positions. The marking out seemed to start off okay and went downhill from there. And it doesn't look any better from another angle, with the exception of quite a lot of the components which are okay, just some of them are even an insult to my scrap bin. Here I'm withdrawing the piston and the rod and the cylinder cover as well as the crosshead. The piston seems okay, although I'm having to use silicone piston rings because the grooves are too wide for the standard cast iron piston rings. Here I'm removing the parts at the other side. There is, by the way, another problem I haven't shown yet. The piston rods are both different lengths. I've taken off the crossheads from the piston rods, and here, as you can see, I've refitted the piston and rod, complete with the cylinder cover, on one side. I'm currently looking at the drawing, and I think I know why the piston rods are not the same length. On the drawing, to obtain the maximum length, there is no overall dimension on the drawing. You have to add the 2BA thread that goes into the piston, to the length of the piston rods parallel part in the middle, Something is wrong, but I'm not going to do anything about that for the moment. I'm going to concentrate on making some respectable crossheads. Who knows, I may even buy the pre-cut parts from Blackgates Engineering, as I'm going to call in there next week. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.